you have to introduce the remote training collar to the dog. It's a foreign signal. Most dogs that I train with, they, they don't have a clue about the remote training collar at first. They simply don't. The remote training collar is a sensation that is not natural. So even though he gets when I say the word sit, and when I pull up on the leash, he understands that. If I introduce a signal, like a remote training collar to him, that's foreign. So yesterday we talked about dragging that signal into the dog's training, making it learn what does that signal mean? Because most dogs will go, okay, I heard you say sit, and I felt you pull up on that leash, but there is something touching me, and I really need to figure out what that is. Well, that's what we do. We do intended pairing. So I went over that yesterday, and a lot of people have requested, can I demonstrate that? So I want to show you what intended pairing looks like. First of all, the setting on your remote collar needs to be at such a level that the dog is simply aware of the signal's presence. It's not a correction. It is something that the dog notices and just goes, okay, so what is that? If it could talk, that's exactly what it would ask you. So that means that we press the button on the remote collar, irregardless of whether the dog's going to do the command or not. That's the job of the leash. You've trained on the leash up to this point. That's the job of the leash. We're simply trying to get to a point where we no longer need a leash. We can control our dog with a remote training collar, and then eventually we won't need anything because all of the responses will be conditioned. Conditioned responses. And therefore, when the dog receives a signal, like you driving a car, you see a red light, you come to a stop. No matter if they change the rules today, you'd find yourself stopping for a long time before you're able to fix that. So here's what intended pairing looks like. Again, not a correction level. I simply need to drag this thing into all the other signals known as a signal suite. Looks like this. Heel. So I press and hold until he's in a heel position. Sit, press and hold till he sits. Down, press and hold till he lies down. Come, press and hold till he gets to me. That's it. You just do that over and over and over again. How many times? It really depends upon the individual dog. It depends on how much time you're training. How many repetitions are you putting in? But the biggest mistake that people make with intended pairing is this. They keep asking the question, why am I pressing the button? My dog's doing the behavior. Again, we don't care. It's kind of like, I, I remember getting into a new SUV that we'd purchased a few years back. And unbeknownst to me, it had some sort of lane change safety feature that caused my butt to vibrate in the seat whenever I changed lanes without turning on my turn signal. Well, I didn't know that. I guess I didn't read the owner's manual as, as much as I should have before I started driving that vehicle. But one day, I just started to change lanes. There's no cars over there, so I didn't feel the need to give a signal. And all of a sudden, brrr, I'm like, what? What? Oh, what was that? I'm thinking, is this thing coming apart? What was that? And it was only after several times I put two and two together. Because I turned on the signal one time, it didn't vibrate. Next time, I didn't turn on the signal, it vibrated. So I paired the vibration with changing lanes. That's what this is about. Down, that's all it's about. What I'm feeling is associated with that word down, and when I lie down, what I'm feeling goes away. No different than when I showed you a long time ago how to do the pulling method for the down or pulling up for the sit. Same exact thing, guys. It's just a haptic signal. It just happens to be a foreign one. And we just got dragged that thing into the same house as occupied by the auditory sit, the auditory or the haptic pull up, the visual standing next to my dog, so on and so forth. And then the beautiful thing is that once you've done that, then you can start to eliminate signals because you don't need all of them. Dogs are smart. I don't need you giving me 10 cues to do one behavior. Just give me one. That's what I love about it. So that brings us to today. So that was just to show you a little bit about using your remote training collar, because a lot of people ask me, hey, Brian, I, I dig what you told me yesterday. Can you show it to me? 
And I get that. I hear, I forget, I see, I learn, I do, I understand. So just make sure you go do it correctly. So speaking of correctly, let's talk about corrections. Corrections are, is you in obedience trying to stop or disrupt an undesired behavior and start teaching a desired behavior, and you want that thing to happen reliably under all conditions when you present any given command to your dog. So remote training callers are one of those, one of many tools that can help you establish reliable obedience, but this tool has the advantage of helping you establish it off leash. Yeah, I can touch you up to a mile from here. I can touch you through windows, through walls. I can touch you on a good day or a bad day, through rain or sunshine. So that's the uniqueness behind this particular tool, just like your cell phone. I can touch you if I know your number, send you a phone call or text. So here's how we do it. We already talked about this. This is pairing. That's what I just demonstrated. I'm going to use the example of come when call. Dog is here. The X is me. The red line means the stimulus is on. In the pairing phase, it's got to be just high enough for the dog to know of its presence, which means that inside your house, it may be level 10. Outside your house, it could be level 20. A lot more stuff going on out there. So I got half of my brain cells going to the stuff out there versus paying attention to you and that foreign haptic signal. So after you've done this for X amount of repetition, most dogs I find, typically I need about 50 per command. They kind of got this. They don't know what it is, but they know when it turns on and when it goes away. Bingo. Now time to move to the next phase called the intermediate phase of training. Now the signal changes in intensity. Here it was just enough for the dog to notice under any condition. Now, oh, you definitely going to notice it. So this is more like a high irritant. It's not just a passing, yeah, I'm feeling something. No, this right here is kind of, okay, you know, I'm feeling it. And, uh, it. Is there any way it can go away, by the way? Because it's going and really starting to bother me here. That's known as an irritant. The way you'll know that your dog is receiving an irritant is because it's Johnny on the spot. Now all of a sudden sniffing that ground, huh, no, I, how do I make that go away? Yeah, in, in other words, the focus is now on the command, not on the other things. There's no pain. There's no discomfort. It's just, no, it's bothering me to such a point that I just really want to make it go away. So that's called a high irritant. So now here's what it looks like in comparison to our intended pairing. Dog is here. You're here. Dotted line means I'm not pressing any button at all. Not at all. So let me reach, reach over and grab my remote collar, so I'll just do it. So we say, come. Here comes our dog. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, looking so good. You're bragging about your dog to your friend standing next to you until you see it make a left-hand turn. And about right there, you realize, you know what? My dog's not coming to me anymore. I can't believe that. So on a high irritant level, you go, oh, excuse me, come. And you hold this down until your dog shows you through its actions that it has stopped pursuing whatever else this was, and is now happily and merrily on its way. Then you can let go. So the big difference in these two is you don't hold it down the whole way. You don't press the button at all, unless you have to. And if you do, you press it on a high irritant. But like this, you have to have your dog on a leash still. This is where Brian and his house I got a room that looks like a fishing village. There's a 50-foot line, a 100-foot line, a 200-foot line. Oh, my gosh, you got lines out of yin-yang. Yeah, because they were connected to the dog and laying down here by me. So if this high irritant failed and the dog kept going that way, I reached down, grabbed my leash, and I made it happen through the leash. But I have changed that signal. All right, so you do this for about 25 reps per command, up to 50. Again, it depends upon the dog. No one's in a hurry here. We want to do it right. Okay, now we're ready for the big leagues, the big show. Here's the big show over here. So on this one, we now use whatever level is necessary to immediately 
Not in a minute from now, two minutes from now, the dog could be headed towards a four-lane highway. Whatever level is necessary to immediately stop the undesired behavior and promote the desire. So we now start to turn up the single. You would do the same thing as if you were holding a long line and your dog is racing towards the highway. You'd go, uh, uh, no, come, come, come. Don't tell me you wouldn't. Please, yeah, please don't tell me you wouldn't because I don't want to hear that. You would do whatever it takes to make your dog stop going towards that highway and, coming, and start coming to you to keep it safe. Absolutely. So here you simply have to find under these conditions, and they change. Be ready to change. That's why darn thing has a rheostat dial. Be ready to change. No, no dog stays at the same level for all commands. Oh, heck no. No dog stays at the same level under all conditions. Everything is more tempting. Wow, you know, I kind of felt that, but that squirrel, I really want to catch that squirrel. Well, you've got to find something that trumps the squirrel. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn this up a little bit here. Do your best to find that level that is just above the benefit level. Because that squirrel is the benefit. That other dog is the benefit at this moment. Those people walking by is the benefit. No, you got to get right above that benefit. That cost can never be below the benefit. It must go above. So be ready to change your level. But try not to go and use higher levels than what is necessary. You start doing that, you start getting an animal who starts to become a little bit more panicky, a little bit more fearful, yada, yada, yada. We'll talk more about that stuff later. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Only thing different between correcting and the intermediate phase is the level that you now have on your remote caller. It's typically higher. This is one of those where, all right, I really wish you would have come to me. You kind of embarrassed me to my friend. But this one here is, okay, that's it. You better come to me. So here we say, come. Oh, look at my dog. I have such a smart dog. I love my dog. My dog's such a great dog. Uh, yeah, he's, oh, wait a minute. Where the heck is he going? Excuse me. He's not coming to me. Oh, boom. And right there, uh, come. And this, other than this one here, most dogs will react immediately and go, oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I promise, I promise I'll never do it again and I'm on my way to you. And right there we let go. And when the dog arrives, well done. Way to go. The beautiful thing about this is you don't have to do this forever. Captain was trained on a remote caller. And you see his incredible attitude in life. He loves working with me. You've seen nothing but joy on this dog. And that's why we, he has so much joy. Because I can turn him loose in any condition. And hundreds of people have witnessed this. And he will come to me every single time. So there's no more correcting. Captain has been naked. He doesn't even have a remote caller right, right now. I was demonstrating this with only the transmitter. He's been naked for years. Naked. No collar of any sort and no leash. And so now, what does training look like? Nothing but benefits. All day, every day. Treats, ball, pet. It's awesome. I love him. I'm not sure if he loves me. But I tell you what, sure Dick's hanging out with me, that's for sure, because he displays it with his actions and his behavior. And he's spot on reliable. So we'll talk more about that later, how you create that reliability, but yet safeguarding that attitude. Having an animal who has predictable information. I know what comes means, and I know what comes if I don't come to you. But Brian, thank you, because you taught me how to control the signal, and that is everything. I'm not in control. I don't want to be in control. You are in control, dog. At the end of the day, the foundation of all training can be described as nothing more than we humans placing our dogs in a position to learn through their own self-discovery. I just set the stage. 
I'm the tech person in the back. I'm the guy wearing black that you never see. I set the lights. I set the sound. That's what I do. And life is the play itself. I just set it all up, allowing my dog to learn. And that's a way cool thing, because I tell you what, you can get that thing done. It's cool. So guys, follow these procedures. Intended pairing first. You gotta do your homework. I'm sorry, you don't get to race through this. Gotta do it right. Once you do this, step to the intermediate phase. You still don't get to correct. Do this correctly, and here's what I'm gonna tell you. Most dogs, once they've been through this, that's, that's not necessary. It really isn't. If it is, maybe one time in their lifetime. That's it. Not necessary. You don't even get to that part right there. But if you do, you know what to do. If they don't do the behavior, press the button, hold the button until they do the behavior. Big difference here, the signal is up and we no longer have a leash to fall back on. There's nothing connected to your dog whatsoever. You only get to fall back on your device. Okay, so that's called correcting with the I'll just hang on to the darn thing. It's called correcting with the reliable or with the remote training collar and creating reliable obedience with it. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about what we call natural pairing. And that's that thing where your dogs are all over your kitchen counter, all over your stove, all over the furniture that you don't want them on, chewing up every darn plant that you own. How do you make these things go away and how do they stay gone, whether you're home or not? So that's called natural pairing, and that's what we're going to cover tomorrow. Until then, do it right. If you found this information beneficial to you, it could be beneficial to your friends who own a dog as well. Send it to them. Until then, until tomorrow, create a great training day. Stay safe. I'll see you then.